Welcome to Excel magic trick number 1766. And in this video, we want to see how to conditionally format missing numbers. Here's the data set without conditional formatting. This is the end result, and we need to use the home styles conditional formatting. But wait a second. There's no built-in option to highlight missing incident numbers. But no worries, Excel worksheet Logical formulas will come to the rescue. Now, in order to get conditional formatting to work on a data set like this, you actually have to highlight every single cell, go up to conditional formatting. There's no built-in option, so we have to go new rule. And we need to put a formula into this dialog box that will deliver a true or false to every single cell. A true will deliver the formatting. A false will not deliver the formatting. Now, rather than struggling with building the formula in this dialog box, it's much easier to build the formula off to the side, check the formula for the patterns of trues and falses, and then when it's working, paste it into that dialog box. Now, the logic of what we want to do is fairly easy. We can see 95, 97, so we know that there's a 96 missing right here. To get at that 96, we're actually going to have to ask two questions. When we're in this cell right here, we're going to have to ask the question, is the next number not equal to 96? If that comes out true, then we want to format. Down here, we're going to have to ask, is the previous number not equal to 96. If that comes out true, then we want formatting. That means for every single cell, we're going to have to ask two questions in an OR logical test. But before we can do that, the very first thing we have to do is take from the right the four characters from each incident number. Now, we can do that using the write function. This is a text function. It looks at some text, comma. And then how many characters from the right? We want four, close parentheses. Now, when I enter this, I want you to notice the default alignment. When you see left alignment, that means Excel considers this text. This is not a number. It's a text number. Now, that'll come into play later. But for the time being, I want to copy this formula down. And I don't know how far I have to drag it down. So here's a great trick. I'll click in the top cell, Control down arrow. Arrow, arrow, and now to highlight all the way up to that formula, Control Shift Up Arrow. Now to copy the formula down, Control D for down. Now this is the next column, so 94 right here needs to be 95. 95 needs to be 96. So in the top cell, I'm going to put it in edit mode with F2. Now remember, these are text numbers, but guess what? Any math operation will convert a text number back to a real number. And because we need to add one, well, there's the math operator that will convert it back to a number, plus one. That'll add one. Control Enter. And now we can double click and send it down. And now we have a column of numbers. And for each particular row, there's the incident number that the next row should have. Right here, if I ask, is 5696 not equal to 5697, I get a true, which is exactly what I need to format this row. Up here, if I ask the question, is 5695 not equal to 5695, I get a false, and therefore no formatting. So to create this logical formula in the top cell, I hit F2. And the comparative operator for not is two characters, less than and then greater than. Then we say right, but not of this row, the next row. So as a relative cell reference, of course, as we copy this down, it'll always be getting the next row, comma 4, close parentheses. Now, whereas this is already a number, if I highlight this and hit F9, we're going to see trouble. I cannot compare that text number to this number number. Control Z, but I can do the same trick. Some math operation, but here I don't want to change the value, so I simply add 0. If I highlight an F9, now I have a number number that I compare to a number number. Control Z. OK, 
Control Enter to put the formula in the cell and keep the cell selected. And then double click and send it down. And there's our column of trues and falses with a true in the second row, which indicates that the next number is not one more than the number in this row. Now, this was for looking at the next. Now we need to always look at the previous. I'm going to steal this formula because we can amend it just slightly. Control C in edit mode. And then in the previous column, F2, Control V. Now, if we think about what's in E4, we're adding one to get to the next one. But now I need to subtract one to get to the previous one. So instead of plus, we'll do minus. And then for this one, I'm going to double click that E5. I'm definitely not looking at the next one. I'm looking at the previous one. Now, this previous one looking at the field name at the top of the column will cause trouble because there are not four digits at the end that represent a text number. So right is going to extract MBER. And when we add 0, of course, we cannot add a number to actual text. So when I Control Enter, I get an error in the first row. But when I double click and send it down, the rest of the values give us exactly what we want. In this row right here, true, that's indicating that for this row, the previous incident number is missing. Now, this value error will not cause trouble when we're using conditional formatting, because the conditional formatting dialog box treats errors as a false value, which is exactly what we want when we're in the first row. Now, very importantly, notice for any given row, we get a true or false. Here we get a false and true. And most of them, we're going to get false, false. The reason we're running an OR logical test is because the OR logical test looks at both logical tests. And all it needs is one or more true. So for this row, we have one or more true. For this row, we have one or more true. And then for the ones with double falses, OR will deliver a false. Now we're going to need both formula elements in the final formula. So in the next column, I'm going to hit F2. And very carefully, I'm going to highlight in edit mode this first logical test formula element. And I want to use the keyboard Control CC. That opens up the clipboard and copies the element. Now if this didn't open when you did Control CC, you have to manually go up, open the clipboard, and then change your options. Check Show Office Clipboard when Control C pressed twice. Now I have the first element, Tab, F2. And now I just Control C one time. And the beauty of the clipboard is once I've collected the formula elements, I can paste them in any order. Escape. Now in this column, equals, and we use the OR function. In the first logical test, it doesn't matter which one, but I'm going to click to insert. That puts it into logical one argument, comma, logical two. I click. Move that out of the way. And now when I close parentheses, Control Enter, double click and send it down, look at that. A single formula gives me a true for the two bookends on either side of the missing invoice. Down here, same thing, two trues. Now, this formula right here will work for a single column. But our goal, and I'm going to click Escape, is to have the formula work in every cell. So if there's a problem with this incident number, I want the whole row to get the formatting. That means when I copy and paste that formula in the dialog box, every single cell needs to be pointing to the E column. So over here, F2. And I'm very carefully going to click my cursor so it's touching the cell reference. And then I hit the F4 key one, two, three times. I lock the column, but not the row. That row is allowed to move as it copies down. I do that for each cell reference, hitting the F4 key three times. And that's our formula. Now I'm going to copy it down just for keeping a record here. But it's only F2, the top formula that we need. Now very carefully, I'm going to copy this and come over here and click in the top left corner, because that's the formula for the first row. Use Control-Shift-Right-Arrow. OK, 
control shift down arrow, control backspace to jump back to the active cell. And I want to make sure that the active cell is the top left corner. Then I go up to home, conditional formatting, new rule. Use formula to determine which cells to format. Format values where this formula is true, control V. And then you can add whatever formatting you'd like. I'm going to add fill yellow, click OK, click OK. And if I change this to something that is not consecutive, bam, that conditional formatting updates. Control Z. All right, in this video, we saw how to create worksheet logical formulas step by step, mash them all together with the correct column reference so the formatting can be applied to the entire record. And then using the conditional formatting dialog box, we applied the formatting to every cell. All right, if you like that video, be sure to click that thumbs up, leave a comment, and subscribe, because there's always lots more videos to come from Excel is Fun. All right, we'll see you next video.